may look like they were idling too long. So you're just, giving me shit, right? <laughs> 900,000 miles is what's coming in today. We have a customer coming in with a 900,000 mile Ford 6.7 liter power stroke. Basically unheard of. That a guy has used to transport stuff all across the country. He has the original CP4 pump that came off the engine when they tore it out. So we're gonna inspect that and see how that looks. Apparently all he's used is fuel additive to keep the thing going. So we're gonna see after 900,000 miles what it looks like, but it's the original one. Never done a dang thing to it as far as replacing it, converting it, anything like that. The engine had some sort of failure, so we're gonna dive into that at some point and see what happened to finally kill this thing after 900,000 miles. But I'm way excited to see how the system looks. That's a lot of miles. Let's check it out. We're gonna tear down the pump see what it looks like, but no fuel issues prior to the engine failure. Other than at 670,000, I replaced the fuel injectors. Okay, okay. For the first time. But you replaced them not because of a contaminated system? No, because just... they were already, um, they were doing the turbo. Okay. And they were kind of into it, and I said, they've got a lot of miles on the injectors, why don't we just replace those two over there? Okay. And they took them out and they said, you might not even need to do this because they were still silver, they weren't carbon. Really? Okay. And your secret is good additive. Good additive and using it. As you probably know, and maybe a lot of your customers don't, these diesel trucks need to be run every day, yeah. every day. They sit, doesn't like it. Right. They want, right. To, be, they want to be run. So eight, 892, 316. 316, let's, uh, let's see what the pump looks like. So usually when a pump fails, this is one of the first things that we'll take off and we call it a glitter party, but there will be a ton, you know, tons of aluminum or metal around that. And so far yours looks great. Do you need any of this back for a core? Okay. Well, oh, thank you. We might want it back for a display though. Yes, <laughs> yeah, the, the display for sure. Yeah. The, other, the only special thing I think I did was uh, fuel filters. A any time I change the insane diesel fuel, uh, oil filter, change the fuel filter so every how, single time. How often were your intervals when i first mileage. started 5000 10000 5000 10000 then i'm up to i was up to 15000 so every 15000 miles and and how come you built up to that 15 just cuz you were, were you doing oil sample oil tests? analysis okay yeah. yeah and at 15 i still didn't need to change the oil but i just didn't feel comfortable really not saying it's not possible cuz i've done them to 27 when i knew my engine was starting to fail right cuz i was going to need a new engine anyway might as well see what i can do and i got up to 27000 with the engine going bad, I still got up that high. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so okay. without needing it. That's incredible. Yeah, I mean, we're 5,000 for us on most just stock, no modifications, 5,000 is pushing it. The fact that you were able to consistently go 15 is, is a testament. And it, at 15, it's testing like 90%, 95% as good as it was testing at five or 10. Really? So it's not even that it was close. Right. I just didn't feel comfortable. Yeah, yeah. That, it, it's a scary thing to go that well, far. Well, it's a lot of money to deal with for something that's going to cost me 200 bucks. Right. You know, right. pay 200 bucks or 35,000. So you were doing oil and filter, or oil and fuel filter. Anytime the filter came out. So okay. if they had to do work on the oil pan and okay. I only had 5,000 miles on the oil, okay. new fuel filters at the same time. Anytime it came out, fuel filters went back in, so anything. So you were doing the insane diesel filter but then what would you run as a, like your stock location filter? Uh, just the Ford. The Ford one? Yeah, okay. the Ford brand, yeah. Okay, which is a great filter. Yeah, that's, that's no, typical it's, what we yeah. Do. Okay. I mean, I want to switch to the fast system at some point, but I'll probably still keep some of the Ford, I think stays intact with that. Yes. But um, yeah. I want to switch to that at some point, but I just yeah. haven't, I just did a big expenditure, so. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Pick and choose. Mm -hmm. Still look perfect. Oh, really? Yeah. Amazing. Uh, you can see the lobe inside of it. Looks not really anywhere. 
It looks polished. Yeah. That's that's the way it's supposed to look when it comes out of the box. Wow. Um, or pretty I mean, close. You probably there's probably you could see like very slight lines, but I mean. Nice. Oh my gosh. That's kind of like it's kind of like a crankshaft. I mean, you're gonna see a little bit wear, but it's it looks fine. I'm blown away. I'm absolutely blown away. That's incredible. And here's here's the other one. Yeah, I mean, super super light. With what you just did at 900,000 miles with this, I, I've we see pumps go out at 40,000 miles. You know, usually before that they're under warranty or the trucks are just so new that we don't see them. So, but we've seen trucks 40,000 miles and they do not look like this. Wow, cool. That that's some good show and tell right there. That's impressive. We thought you'd like that. So. I'm waiting for Ashton Kutcher to pop out and be like, punked. This yeah, really right. is. Yeah, yeah, nice. <laughs> this really isn't a 900,000. <laughs> this is a brand new truck. Yeah. Well, it makes so. a big difference by put, increasing the lubricity of your, of your diesel fuel that you run through the truck. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's why we convert the pumps and stuff like that is to get rid, because these require so much lubrication yeah. with, with that high lift and the way that they designed this and the way that it can aerate that fuel and cause that cavitation, it's, that's why these pumps don't work yep. so well. And I'm buying my fuel coast to coast too. It's not like going to one spot. Right. So, but I do go to truck stops right. and I fill up where the big rigs fill up. Right. Because I take, I can take, I can hold 170 gallons okay. of fuel. So okay. I need the high flow pumps. And, right. Um, that could have maybe something to do with it too, but right. I think it's mainly the additive and running it constantly. 19,896 hours. Holy huh. cow. Engine idle hours, 4,700. Wow. Because I sleep in there while I'm working, so yeah. in the winter. Yeah. And they said they've never seen anybody maintain really? their truck as much as I do. I do yeah. a little over what them, oh, I do a lot over what the manual says because I've seen on your videos, they always tell you they're trying to get you through. Right. right. And, um, but I don't abide by that. I want it to last. It's my livelihood. If it's not running, I'm not making any money. I can't pay my bills. Like, you know. Right, right. So, yeah. you know, if I have to pay a little extra maintenance, make a little less money, it's better than making no money, uh, yeah. <laughs> which I would be if I didn't maintain it. Well, so. the number one reason that we do engines is because of lack of maintenance. I mean, then, then there's second and third place kind of things. But if people just maintained it and, and you're you're the, the opposite of that spectrum. I mean, you're, you're one that maintains it religiously, but yeah, we wouldn't do half as many engines as we do if people just maintained it and just right. changed the oil. Well, like your dad says, do your maintenance, I'm busy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, re really, we, we promote that and people are like, well, wouldn't that lose you business? And we're like, yes, if people just maintained it, yes, we would, we would have a lot less business, but people don't. So that's Can't amazing. afford not to maintain it. Right, yeah, you got places to be. You know, if I was independently wealthy, sure, whatever. Right. Do what I do and boom, hey, Dave, I need another motor. Right. Can we pick it up in two months? Sure, okay. Right, right. But I'm not. Maintenance pays off. Yeah. So just to kind of what this gentleman and my son were talking about, lubricity, diesel fuel additive is a prevention measure. It doesn't fix anything. If your pump's already failed, it's like changing the oil on your engine if your rod bearing's gone out. It's not gonna fix the rod bearing. but Adding the lubricity and the cleaners to your diesel fuel is the best insurance you'll have to prolong the life of the pump. And this gentleman's got close to a million miles. The engine blew up, but the pump still looked pristine. Enrique? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> How you doing? Nice to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you. Who's this? This is Duke. Duke. It's an, oh, he's my, a beautiful My wife, dog. Tiffany. Hello. Hi, Tiffany. Hey. So, Enrique, I hear... Uh, you won one of the bikes. Yeah. And you live local, which is amazing. Yeah. Well, out west in Grantsville. Okay. Well, so that's, that's pretty local. That's pretty local, Consider, right? We've got some that are, I've got to ship all the way to the East Coast. And uh, can I ask you what it was that you purchased uh, to, to get your, uh, your points? What, a little hat. A hat. Oh, sweet. That's a that's nice. That's a nice hat, right? That is a nice hat, dude. I like that hat. That thing is sweet. I think it's the coolest looking one. It is. Uh, you got a little one at home? No, all our kids are, are grown, oh. and we don't have any grandkids yet. Okay. So it, we might just keep it and run it around cramp, camp this, this summer. I'm voting for that for the grandkids. I'm voting for that, man. You got to keep it. Somebody's going to have fun with yeah. it. Yeah. Anyway, thank you. Thank you for coming out. 
And a Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to you. Appreciate it. Yep. I was talking to some of your mechanics. Uh huh. And it, you know, I just gave them some tips. Uh huh. I just told them it may look like they were idling too long. So, just to. You're just giving to... me shit, right? <laughs> It takes a minute. Because <laughs> this has got that CP4 pump. Uh -huh. Is that the one that they always say yeah. kind of craps out on they, people? They, they crap out all the time. And then to do an oil analysis, what does that take? Well, the oil analysis will tell you about your CP4. Okay. Because that's fuel. You know, just do the disaster prevention kit on it. It bypasses that the, the fuel getting into the bottom crankcase. You know, it, it helps to avoid the grenade problem if it ever grenades. And then just check your fuel filter and then you know check it with a microscope. But the CP4 has a really high lift cam in it, the crank. You know, it's it's really roll, taking that roller piston and it's really shoving it up. I mean it's the ramp on that is very uh, it's very tall. And so there's a tremendous amount of pressure because this pump will pump 30,000 psi. I mean it's a serious hydraulic pump. And and to get that ramp and that pressure to go up like that, um, you know, you've got a pretty steep ramp on that crankshaft that's pushing that roller cam. But there's no like telltale sign of it's gonna go bad or, I mean, I've got 140,000 miles on this. Yeah, there really isn't. So I mean, you can pull your fuel filter off and if you find it, it's like, okay, the damage is happening. Replace the pump, change the filter, keep your fingers crossed. But the best thing to do would just go ahead and if, if and do a, that a lot of people, lot, the disaster kit minimum, or just upgrade it to a CP3 or DCR, you know, yeah, change it out. Okay. Yeah. Prevention is the best medicine. That's why I'm always talking. You know, I'm the guy that says I'm an engine shop, but I'm telling people do your maintenance. You know, and if you your engine builder is telling you to do your maintenance, which I don't really do, I'm not an oil change shop. You know, you might want to listen to him because I could go, I could actually talk myself out of business. I'm like the heart surgeon telling you, look, quit drinking, quit smoking, <laughs> exercise every day, and you know, and, and do some breathing work and stuff like that. And if you did that, you know, you probably would avoid the heart surgeon. Well, and I think that's why so many people like your channel is because you're pretty honest and, and kind of forthcoming with that information. Like, hey, if you do this stuff, you're going to avoid seeing, spending money with me. Coming to see you, yeah. And I mean, I love my business, and it's grown from a storage shed to what it is today. So people, you know, I mean, there's, I'm always going to be needed, but I'd like to be needed a little less, I guess is what I'm saying, you know. I want to be helped on, you know, things that I need help on. Right, right. So anyway, it's a good question. Thanks for asking. But that's, that's my reasoning for the diesel fuel additive. That's my reason. <coughs> For, you know the CP4 disaster prevention kit you know if we can prevent stuff by spending a little money yes right. maintenance you know I understand it costs money but it is always cheaper than the repair I mean seriously you double up your oil changes in 200,000 miles on a truck or you just like you just say screw that man I'm doing my oil change every 10 15,000 miles I'm not doing it you know the difference in cost is compared to an engine you want me to do the math for you? You know, I mean, right. you, you know, some people they're like, and I'm like, trust me, man. Just do it. It's so much cheaper. Right. And it's the same way with the fuel added. If I was you, I would change your fuel filter. I would look at it, do the disaster prevention kit, and then do the fuel the fuel additive. Okay. Just add some lubricity. Awesome. Thanks again, buddy. Thank you. Good go question. go get Thank warm you. inside. Yeah, I will. So there it is. I'm so grateful. I got to meet Enrique. Uh, he lives out here in the desert, uh, just west of us, and uh, one of our winners, one of the nine winners of our motorcycles. But listen, you still got five days left. We're doing the giveaway on our Jeep, the Gladiator, fully decked out, supercharged, winch, bumpers, racks. So we're releasing the video tomorrow of all the, uh, the items that we've added to this Gladiator. And uh, so be watching for that. But you got five days left for this giveaway. Somebody's gonna win it.